Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to perform a molecular geometry optimization using the JobX script and the Ripper module of TurboMol. So in the previous tutorial on TurboMol, I showed you guys how to run a molecular density functional theory calculation using the Ripper module. And this tutorial, we are basically continuing that series and we'll be performing a geometry optimization now. And we will be using the benzene molecule uh, for this tutorial. So we will be optimizing the atomic coordinates of the benzene atoms and um, yeah so once again just like the previous tutorial I'm going to assume that you already have TurboMole installed and you also know the directory where it's installed too and also um, I'll be using the TurboMole 7.5 version for this tutorial just in case um, there's some confusion so I thought it would be good to mention it and also please make sure that you can um, basically um, you can call or run the uh, Ripper module or other modules and scripts of TurboMol from anywhere in the command, command line. So essentially what that means is that um, you should extend your path environment variable to uh, the TurboMol binaries and scripts uh, so that you can call them from anywhere. And the way you do that is simply by doing something like export turbo div and equals and then type in the path uh, of your TurboMole directory. So in my case, it is um, something like this. Okay, and then what I will do is I'll do um, source dot turbo there config turbo env. So basically what these two um, lines will do is they will uh, make sure that now the TurboMol binaries and scripts are added to my path environment variable. So now you, I can check whether this works or not by typing which Ripper. And yeah, so now you can see that Ripper actually points to this um, path. Anyways, so that means now I can correctly call Ripper as well as JobX. Let me just also check JobX. Yeah, so okay, JobX is actually a script within the TurboMol. So yeah, so this script as actually is the uh, main thing that allows us to perform this geometry optimization. So it's like a controller script that calls Ripper, it calls StatPD and these programs. So basically um, Ripper performs the single point energy calculation as well as the gradient calculation which is the most important thing for geometry optimization. So the gradients basically are just forces in a way and then um, using those gradients or forces then stat pd comes in and it performs the or it calculates the um, step or the or the direction in which you want to move your atoms and by how much do you want to move your atoms and this is done using some uh, geometry optimization algorithms like uh, bfgs in the case of stat pd and again uh, if you want to get more details about the job X script then of course uh, you should head over to the TurboMole manual and refer to the chapter 5 to get more information about that. Okay, so coming back to our terminal. So let's see what do I have in this directory. So I have nothing uh, else except um, acetone ripper. So for this tutorial, let's create a directory called benzene gym opt ripper. So this will be the directory within which we will perform the geometry optimization of the benzene molecule. So let's head into that directory ls so as you can see the directory is completely empty and as i said in the previous tutorial first of all we need some atomic coordinates to start with our calculation so i have the atomic coordinates of the benzene are very well optimized already so the geometry optimization for this tutorial won't take too long but yeah so these are those coordinates in the xyz file format and then i need them uh, in the TurboMol squad file format so i'll just copy them and as i showed you guys in my previous tutorial i have made this uh, really nice GUI where you can just paste your um, XYZ file or file in any of these um, formats and then select the output format in this case TMOL uh, stands for TurboMol and then you get this quad file and you can also have a look if the visualization is correct or not so just go ahead and select it all control C head over back to our terminal create a file called quad paste it using control V then press Control plus O to save it, press Enter, and then Control plus X to exit. So that is how we created this squad file in the terminal. 
And now, just like before, we will run the define utility to create the control file. Now, in this tutorial, I won't be, I will like create the control file really quickly using define. I won't really explain a lot, as I have already done that in my previous tutorial on how to run a module DFT calculation using Ripper. So I'll just do it really quickly. So I'll press define, enter, 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 a quad, enter this C just to check. Yeah, okay, works. Start, enter, no, enter. B all def to SVP enter BL just to check enter enter star um, EHT enter Y enter zero enter Y enter and then DFT enter on enter grid um, M5 enter func PBE enter star enter RI for resolution of identity approximation on enter and um yeah that's all star enter star enter so yeah so now if i list the contents of the directory now i have an aux basis basis control and the molecular orbitals file so now um you can just to make sure that everything is fine you can first of all it would be good if you run a standard um dft calculation using ripper so i will just do ripper output um, single point energy so SPE and M percent enter so now let's try to open this file and see okay so we are already at the third iteration fifth iteration sixth iteration so yeah so the gap DFT Gaussian using the Ripper is uh, running right now actually and yeah so it's over in 13.79 seconds it took so long because I actually didn't set the number of processors, so it was uh, running on a single thread, yeah? So, but anyway, so the SCF calculation converged in eight cycles, and yeah, so everything works fine. Now let's just clear out the terminal and ls. So now you can see that you have a lot of files, as I've already explained in the previous tutorials, uh, like why do they appear here? But yeah, so now we come to the main thing. So now we want to perform the geometry optimization. So the command for that, is actually going to be slightly longer than just doing ripper um, arrow out. So <coughs> I have the command right here actually. So let me just go ahead and copy all of this here. So now um, you can paste it. So, and now I will explain it. So basically what we are doing here is, so JobX basically calls the JobX script then dash np4 means we want to run it on four processes or threads then dash c means the number of maximum cycles for which geometry optimization will be performed in this case i just set it to 500 or some crazy big value so that yeah it doesn't like stop at 30 or something so uh, usually most geometry optimizations even if you're standing from starting from a really bad geometry they should finish up to like 200 to 250 but yeah just I put a big number you can put whatever you like and then you have hyphen or dash g cut 5 so what this means is this sets the threshold for the forces or the gradients yeah so this means that I have set the threshold on the maximum gradient to be 10 to the power minus 5 per um, bore so this is an actually an atomic unit so 10 to the power minus 5 Hartree's per bore, I think, yeah. That should be the correct units. And then you have dash energy seven, which is the threshold for the energy change between two consecutive um, geometry optimization cycles. So this seven means that um, the threshold is um, that the energy should not change by more than 10 to the minus seven Hartree's or atomic units between two consecutive uh, geometry optimization cycles. And then dash ripper means uh, we are telling JobX to use the ripper module for the uh, for the geometry optimization. And then dash keep means um, so basically during geometry optimization it performs a DFT and stat PT uh, calculation a lot of times, right? So uh, it performs them maybe something like ten times, hundred times, two hundred times, uh, depending on the starting geometry and at each out uh, iteration you will get an output of these dft and um, 
stat pd calculations so dash keep means if you want to save those uh, output files from each iteration or not so this if you do dash keep then it will save them if you don't then it will save them so yeah so this is basically the combination that i usually use whenever i am performing a jupyter optimization using ripper and then you can also pipe the output um, to some output uh, file like output job x um, let me make this bigger yeah so yeah so the, you have the arrow output job x and then you can press m percent and hit enter now if i do ls you will notice there's something called job dot start job dot zero and then ah yeah i actually forgot to do no hup here so what you are noticing here is yeah so this i made a mistake actually so every geometry optimization cycle uh, whenever stat pd ends you see this message stat pd and normally stat pd and normally and this is because um, as shown in the manual i did not use no hup so basically this means to uh, run job x in the background which i did not do so now i'm getting these messages in my standard output of the terminal but yeah anyway just press enter and you already see that the job is finished but yeah coming back so here we notice when when we typed in ls we noticed that we had this file called job.0 job start and now if i do ls then you will notice i have many more files job.0 job.1 job.2 job.3 and so on up to five and um, um so basically as i had said before this is because i had used the flag keep and this flag basically saves the outputs from all the uh, geometry optimization cycles so these are the output files job.0 job.1 and all and then you also notice that initially when i pressed ls when it was on the first iteration you had this file called not.converge however now um you have this file called converged so that means now you have converged and you also have another file which was earlier set to geo opt running now it is geo opt converged and what else and yeah and then you just have this output job x file so let's start opening all these files and see what do we get so first let's just open this converged mm -hmm. file so as you can see, it shows that whatever the convergence criteria we were using, so we were using 10 to the minus 7 for energy, 10 to the minus 5 for Cartesian gradients, maximum cycles was set to 500, and then it shows the convergence info at which the geometry optimization stopped. So at which point, uh, like when the convergence was reached, what were the uh, properties of the system? So at this point, our energies were converged up to like 10 to the power minus 9 or 10 yeah as you can see here when we only had a threshold of 10 to the power minus 7 so this is 0.1 into minus 6 so yeah 10 to the power minus 7 similarly the gradient the max gradient values at this uh, at convergence were uh, 3.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 when we had a threshold of only um, 1 into 10 to the power minus 5 so yeah, so this shows the um, some convergence properties, and then let's open this um, geo opt converge file. So this is very good. So this file actually um, shows us at which cycle we converge. So we converge in six cycles. So you can see we have job dot zero up to job dot five. Then again, this shows the energy convergence and the gradient convergence uh, uh, state. And it also shows some properties about our machine, the directory, the username, and also the times, and also the uh, the way you call job x. So what were the flags that you use uh, when calling job x? And then it also tells you the convergence criterion again, the convergence criteria for the maximum norm of CF energy gradient, then also for the maximum norm of basis set gradient, and um, the and then it tells you how did it perform this uh, geometry optimization so essentially it performs a dft calculation using ripper as well as the so yeah dscf is just uh, to uh, refer to another module of travel mode which also performs a uh, dft calculation but yeah basically this means that you performed a dft calculation using ripper and then a gradient calculation using ripper in other modules of travel mode like dscf and ridft both are done 
the DFT and the gradient calculations are done using different modules. For example, for the case of RIDFT, you perform RIDFT and then add are the grad or something I forgot the name similarly for the DSCF you do DSCF and then grad or something maybe you can check out the manual um, da, 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 da. yeah so for RI you do RIDFT and RD grad similarly for DSCF you do DSCF and grad however since we are using Ripper Ripper does both energies and the gradients together so even though these are listed as two steps, these are actually done in a single step. So first the single point energy calculations and then the gradients are calculated in a single output file using Ripper. And then you perform stat PT using the stat PT module of Termomoly. So yeah, so now let's see what else. So then you have this output JobX file. Let's also check it out. I'm sorry, um, output JobX. Yeah, so this uh, doesn't show much. It just says, okay, optimization cycle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Not much more than that. Now, finally, let's start looking at the job files. So, first of all, um, I think it would be um, best to just have a look at the first job file and the last job file. So, you also have them by the names of job.last, job.start. So, let's open job.start. Um, sorry. Ah, okay. So the job dot start actually uh, doesn't contain much. Sorry. So actually, we should have opened job dot zero. I think I thought job dot start would also contain this, but yeah, never mind. Yeah, okay. So job dot zero is the first um, DFT calculation using the starting geometry. So here you see that we have the standard Ripper output with the starting geometry, and then it ends without anything else. So it just uh, calculates the um, gradients uh, and um, then it ends. However, now if you go to job.1, then you will notice something different. So first of all, if you go to the starting of the file, you will notice that it doesn't start with the ripper step. So here I did job cat job.1 and it actually starts with the stat PD program because in the first cycle, Ripper performs the single point energy calculation and calculates the gradients. And then this stat PD uh, program basically um, uh, reads uh, in those gradients and uh, other stuff like atomic coordinates. And then it performs a geometry optimization uh, or like uh, it calculates the new atomic coordinates based on those gradients and Hessian uh, information. So it uses an algorithm called um, BFGS for the Hessian update and also a GDIIS and trust radius. So basically a very sophisticated algorithm to accelerate the geometry optimization. Um, so yeah, so here you see all those um, information about that. And then you also see some convergence criterion that we have set. And then you see the uh, Cartesian coordinates and then the Cartesian gradients and then you see that um, have we uh, then this program basically checks if we have achieved convergence or not so basically it checks if the energies are converged so since this was only the first uh, step so of course energies are not converged and even um, the gradients are currently at um, the maximum gradient is currently 0 0.006 while the criteria is point um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So of course um, we haven't achieved that. However, since it has now provided us with new um, atomic um, coordinates using the previous gradient um, values, now the Ripper will use those new atomic coordinates run the DFT calculation as well as the gradient calculation. And um, and yeah, again at the end you also have the same information that we saw earlier. Just to summarize here. And uh, then if you go to job.2, uh, so then again the same thing is done. Now these new atomic coordinates and the um, new gradients are used to perform uh, this stat PD uh, calculation for the new atomic coordinates. And yeah, so you again check the convergence criteria and you keep on doing it until convergence is achieved. And uh, in the last um, file, cat job.5, you see that the uh, at the end you can see that the current energy convergence is at 10 to the minus 8 and the current maximum gradient is at 
10 to the power minus 5 or something which is basically um, which basically means that we have achieved the convergence criterion so yeah so I think um, that is all yeah so yeah so now you can see that in the stat pd file that um, most of the um, convergence criteria are achieved and yeah so um, that is pretty much it so that is how you run a molecular geometry optimization calculation using the ripper module of turbo mole with the uh, job x script so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful in case you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this i will be making videos on how to perform rttdfg calculations and geometry optimizations for the periodic systems and so on a lot more exciting stuff is coming on even by cs cypher and other quantum chemistry programs as well so uh, stay tuned and if you have any doubts or questions leave them in the comments section down below and um, yeah so that is it Hope you guys have a great day.